Hello, welcome to this series of videos on urban economics and management for developing countries with a special focus on cities of Sub-Saharan Africa. My name is Lusuga Kironde and I have a keen interest in urban studies as well as land development uh, matters. If you are new to this series of lectures, we have covered some ground, we have a number of videos. We have a number of videos covering uh, the meaning, scope and application of urban economics, the economics of urbanization, looking at the rationale for urbanization and continued urban growth, urban land use patterns, urban employment and life dwelling activities, urban housing and human settlements, urban housing and uh, 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 owning versus uh, renting, urban housing in terms of elements of housing finance and the informal urban housing areas. Also, we have covered partly the urban transportation uh, problem. Now, this video, or lecture number 10, looks at the traffic congestion problem. And the uh, traffic congestion in developed countries and even in the theory of urban economics is normally treated together with uh, uh, public transport. Uh, at the end of this lecture, you will know the meaning of traffic congestion, you will know the causes and effects of traffic congestion, you will understand the demand side of road space, you will appreciate the supply side of uh, road space, and evaluate policies to address the traffic congestion problem in the cities of the sub-Saharan Africa. Now the problem is that many countries have to contend with the problem of traffic congestion, especially in large cities and during peak hours or the so-called rush hours. The problem has been increasing with the growing ownership and driving of private cars. Uh, traffic jams are time and resource wasting and frustrating and can lead to diseases including road rage. Congested roads inconvenience pedestrians lead to increased road accidents, the fuel pollution and encourage breaking of the law. And they impact negatively uh, on public transport. Now what is traffic congestion? Uh, traffic congestion is a condition on road networks that occurs as road use increases and is characterized by slower speeds, longer trip times, and increased vehicular queuing. Congestion occurs when traffic demand is large enough for the interaction between vehicles to slow the speed of the traffic and sometimes bring traffic to a complete uh, st stop. Cause, the, 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 the cause is mainly there being too many vehicles especially cars, but also lorries, all seeking to use the road space at the same time. There has been some world trends. Uh, road traffic has been rising exponentially, while the length of public roads has been increasing at a scenario space. Road passenger kilometers using cars and freight tonnage kilometers using trucks have been rising fast in recent decades, while those made by buses or rail have been falling in many parts of the developed world. Motoring cost now is an increasing percentage of household expenditure and traffic congestion affects public transport adversely in all large cities. The economists see traffic congestion as a misuse of space. The argument is that the demand for road space is high because the cost involved considers mainly the private cost of, to the motorists, that is fuel, vehicle maintenance and time, not the social costs that are imposed on others and on society in general. Therefore, the use of road space is underpriced. Efforts have gone into bringing the marginal private cost to the level of marginal social cost. And it should be noted that the demand for road space comes from individual motorists, but the supply for road space comes from uh, public authorities. What are the determinants? What are the det determinant demands for road space? One, the price. The margin cost for the motorist to use road space, that is fuel, maintenance and depreciation and time. The price of electricity, the price of elasticity is low. So raising the price of this uh, is likely to bring very little change. Uh, two is income. As incomes increase, usage of cars increases as well, even at a higher proportion. Price of substitutes, uh, what is the, 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 the price of the bus, rail fares, as well as the convenience uh, compared to the private car. The price of complements, that's the price of cars, price and availability of parking. The price of cars, for instance, has been going down for uh, cities of developing countries. The test and utility, there's a high desire for many people 
in both developed and developing countries to travel by car because of its convenience. But we need also to note that demand fluctuates during daytime, during the certain times of the day. How about the supply for road space? In the short run, this supply is constant, and if there is no congestion, the supply is more than adequate. At times of congestion, pressure on this fixed supply till maximum flow uh, of vehicles is reached. In the long run, public authorities build new roads, expand existing ones, build flyovers, and expand panels and highways. We need to note that construction of new road infrastructure many times takes on political overtones. And in the long run, new roads, etc., generate new traffic. So you need another solution to uh, just expanding the uh, roads. Economists also see uh, uh, traffic congestion as generating externalities. When you join a, a motorist joins the road, they create externalities. There are two types of these. The user to use externality. This impacts negatively on other road users by slowing down the speed for all. And user to non-user externality, user to non-user externality, which is pollution, noise, inconvenience to pedestrians and the society, negative impacts on public transport and increased accidents. Individual motorists normally do not take externalities into consideration. That's the need for intervention by uh, public authorities. What we have talked about before is mainly general and mainly uh, looking at uh, uh, developed countries. But the situation in developing countries is a bit different. Yes, there has been growth of car ownership, fueled by cheap second-hand cars from the de de developed world. But there are huge infrastructure deficits. Uh, good quality roads are few, they are not well networked, they are not even well maintained. There is a frequent breakdown of road infrastructure such as traffic signals and road signs. There is poor discipline on the road with the drivers up to doing each other. There is poor enforcement of road traffic regulations and there's frequent traffic interruptions due to, to accidents and passages of uh, VIP. So therefore, traffic congestion seems to be uh, running into a vicious circle as is shown uh, in that uh, uh, diagram. And the end result of that is that once, once you have too many cars on the road, uh, then people tend to also um, uh, leave public transport and they, they go for private transport. Now, when you look at the situation in developing countries, you will conclude that car ownership and use is still low. And therefore, this is not the major cause of traffic congestion in the cities of sub saharan and Africa. Car ownership is desired by many, but levels of income are low to allow this ownership and use. The uh, studies have shown that the average model share of informal collective transport, that is minibuses and collective taxis, is 34%. A non-motorized transport, that is walking and bicycling, is 40%, while the private car is only 12%. This means that uh, congestion is caused not by private cars, but by limited, poorly designed and networked infrastructure, by poor land use planning, by road use in discipline, and chaotic uh, public transport. So, when we think in terms of policies, we can think of direct provision of roads. Yes, we need to create more roads, flyovers and tunnels. These are costly and the local residents may suffer from noise, fumes. More people may leave the public transport, which is bad for the poor, and this may create urban stroll. They may also change land values and the land uses. But um, the, there is an increase in congestion as new and better roads are built. There's uh, urban sprawl uh, encouraged, and the, these new roads attract new socioeconomic activities. If you look at the Stop Dar es Salaam, the Port Access Road, which is constructed in 1980, was cost, uh, was uh, congestion free, but now it is uh, overloaded with uh, uh, lorries and so on. Also, new 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 roads have adverse environmental impacts, like loss of agricultural land, natural beauty, noise fumes, pollution, and also disrupt local communities. So you really need to take all this into consideration. This diagram shows part of the Nelson Mandela Road, the Port Access Road, and the flyovers that have been cre created in Dar es Salaam as a way of solving the problem, although our belief is that this is only a temporary solution. Then you need perhaps to provide cheap public transport, where government invests in more buses, more routes, low fares. Hopefully that this will attract people to switch from cars. But this would only happen if the buses are frequent, if they are cheap, 
if they are comfortable, if there are enough roads. This option is difficult for developing countries. Uh, so uh, subsidies and the BRTs, which we'll see a bit later, are actually uh, difficult. There are park and ride alternatives where there is free or cheap and secure car parking and the cheap bus services to town centers. An informal version of this is operating in parts of Dar es Salaam. Other, area, other, other approaches would be looking at legislation and regulation, like restricting access of cars to some areas or parts of the road, but these tend to make restricted areas more congested. Parking restrictions may not reduce congestion. Uh, cars park, could be parked illegally or in non-restricted areas. But with all this, you still need to increase the cost of driving private cars in terms of road licenses, fuel taxes, and road pricing. This, however, must go hand in hand with improving the quality of public transport. Finally, if we are thinking of addressing congestion and uh, public transport in cities of sub-Saharan Africa, certainly unlike the situation in developed countries, more transport infrastructure is still required. The aim should be to displace traffic, to offer alternative routes, to facilitate non-motorized transport and public transport, like for, like for example, providing bus lanes and trains uh, in these new highways that are being constructed. We need to improve land use planning to increase densities, to curb urban, to curb urban throw, to displace office, commercial and social activity nodes, so that we displace also the, uh, uh, the congestion. Because of limited resources, it means uh, you need the public authorities need, need to work closely in collaboration with uh, the private sector and also with the communities. And uh, finally, uh, there is the, 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 the need of improving public transport. And for cities in sub-Saharan Africa, for the time being, this can only be done with, uh, as, a, uh, as a collaboration between public and private sector through also regulation and also to educate the public on the uh, uh, goods and the challenges of uh, uh, efficiently using uh, public transport. Thank you for showing interest in this video. Do not forget to subscribe, to like and to share this, and also give us a feedback. We very much appreciate your opinion. Uh, see you next time uh, in another video which will be focused on looking at the problems that there are in cities of uh, Sub-Saharan Africa.